What's up guys, if you followed the series this far, you should have a game like this where you can walk between the rooms. Oh, my character doesn't give a fuck about the wall. Cool. Anyway, so like I was saying, if you followed the series so far, you should have a game like this where you can walk through the doors. There's room numbers that are generated on the ground of the room. So you can see this is room number eight. And if you look on the left, room number eight is connected to this game object. So if you save anything inside of this game object, it will appear when you enter the room, which allows you to do random dungeon generation and you can create as many rooms as you want, right? There's still a lot more work to do on the map. So when you start the game, you shouldn't be able to see the entire map. There should be fog so it should just you should only be able to see this tile to the left of where you started and it should be a light a darker version of gray to signify that you haven't been inside of it and then when you enter it it should change to the lighter version of gray and then these squares around this should be unexplored rooms and they should be the darker version of gray and that's how you kind of explore the dungeon right now i would recommend drawing better like these are just rooms that i like i've personally made i'm gonna probably get an artist to do a better job on these at some point when i'm done my game or when i'm closer to the end of my game. I'm not very good at art, to be honest. I did buy a drawing tablet, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good at drawing. So uh, in this video, we're going to be, you can see that I've already done this, but we're going to be converting the stick wizard model from the one that you saw in the previous video to this version that I have now. You can see he's attacking a little bit faster. His attacks are a little bit bigger. He's a little bit bigger. He's got this shadow outline, like this gray outline. It kind of makes him look cartoony. And then I changed his staff. So he's got like a white tip to the staff which is actually the default material and then he has like this particle system around his staff that makes it look like it's glowing right so we completely change it i have to do, like i i have we have a lot more work to do on the map but i think it's important that i spend an episode to make the character look better so that if anyone clicks on this video they can see that the game actually kind of looks good instead of like and then they might actually stay and watch like the rest of the series up to this point okay so stuff that's required for this like everything required that you see here is going to be available in the description of the video i recommend you go download everything in the description of the video except for the project if you already have the project you don't have to download that but the entire project will be available for free in the description of the video and this is i'm probably either going to do every five videos where i upload a new copy of the project or this might be the last upload because i can't have people downloading my entire game otherwise they might try to uh post it as their own so i obviously can't do that but uh, if you follow the series you should be able to make a game the same as mine and then at least you'll have done some work too anyway whatever okay so what we're doing today you can probably do to any character that you uh make in blender or any other modeling software and drag into your game right so let's drag the stick wizard tutorial back into the scene i dragged it in while the game was running so it's not there anymore and you can see he's halfway through the ground so this character's origin is halfway through the body like it's in the middle of the character for game characters you should really put the origin to the feet that way it uh he's standing on the ground by default right i've uploaded this folder like this player material folder is going to be uploaded and attached to the video so what we want to do is i'm going to just uh, actually export it right now hang on export package export and then I'll just put it in my downloads and I'll call this player. Yeah. So when you download this, all you have to do to import it is if you double click on it, Unity will, because this is already part of this project, but yours will show differently. And you can just click the import button. And when you do, you'll have a folder that gets added to your project automatically that looks like this one. Okay. So I've added eyes to the character. This is just this, like the drawing of the character. It's just two eyes, right? Let me just show you. Hang on, let me open this. So we just have these two eyes here. This it comes from like model painting in Blender. So if you want to do that, you need to go look up a YouTube video on how to do that. We're not going to be doing model painting in Blender. This whole series is basically just going to be inside of Unity. So yeah, you can do that. This player material is what makes the character look like this, right? So let's drag the material onto the character. So to do that in the scene view, you just literally drag the material onto the player. Now, the thing that makes him look cool in this where he has the outline is called a shader. So you see at the top here, there's a shader called player, right? So when we double click on the shader, it actually opens up a graph that looks like this one, right? So there's two parts to the graph. This top part is the part that makes him outlined, which you could apply this to any character. It will outline anything. Any object that you put this on will get outlined. So if we go back to the scene, if we right click, we can create a 3D object. It's just going to be a sphere for right now. And we're going to make the sphere a little bit bigger, maybe three by three by three. So you can see. So if we drag this player material onto this sphere, you can see that it's outlined and it looks really cool. You can apply this to any material or sorry, any object in your game right so this is the part of the shader that actually makes it look cool has that adds like the glowy thing then this bottom part is how we're adding oops, uh this bottom part is how we're adding the eyes 
I'm not gonna go through the bottom part. This top part, I did a video on making a ghost and uh, shaders are a little bit more complicated. I'm not gonna go through what the shader is doing. To, like It's taking the normal vector and it's using the dot product uh, by the view direction. So the dot product is like, if you have a vector which is like XYZ or RGB, it's any three numbered value, right? If you multiply the X by the X, the Y by the Y and the Z by the Z, that's the dot product. And so to, when you do that, you're getting the same exact shape as the character, but then we're moving it a little bit on the outside, right? So this becomes an emission on the outside and uh, we're multiplying the glow power by a one minus, uh, this is two, like, so, okay. So this is the distance. So th the smooth step, what it does is it takes this edge, which is one, which is f the full value, right? And then this glow power is how much, like how close to the edge. So our glow power is like 0.9, right? So 0.9 of this is going to be the actual character. And then 0.1 of this is going to be the glow factor, right? I said I wasn't going to explain this, but here I am explaining it. So if we click on our material, we can see we've set the glow power to nine, right? So let me just open paint so I can try to show you what this is doing. So if you have like, this is the player, right? This is 0.9 of the size, and then this is one, right? Smooth step, what it does is it takes um, these two values and it transitions the colors between each other uh, instead of just immediately becoming dark and doing like a hard edge, like see how this fades into the other color? That's what smooth step does. So if you used a step node, for example, like if you got rid of this and replace it with a step node, you would see like a hard transition between the two, but we don't want that. We want it to fade between the two. So this creates like a really nice outline of the character. This is the only part of the shader that you need to make it look cool. This part at the bottom, this is just the eyes, okay? So we've put in the eyes into this texture. Um, we're multiplying the eyes by a color to make them brighter than the rest of it. So the eye glow color, what we're doing there is if we go to the material, you see on the right here, we have the eye glow color. We have the intensity of that set to six. So that way his eyes on the front of his head are really glowy. If we turn that down, you can see that you can't like the eyes are there, but they're overwritten by like this outline. And we actually want to really be able to the eye should stand out, especially from a top down perspective, like you can barely see them when you're looking top down, but we want them to be actually fully visible. So this is the shader that outlines him and makes him look cool. This is the most important part of this video. So if you if you just drag the material on, I've already set this up for you. We've also set the metallic to one. Because if you don't, if you change it back to zero, which is the default, you can see like this shiny dot on his head. We don't want that because he's kind of cartoony. We don't want him to have any like type of light on him. He should just be fully metallic, which makes him look cooler. And uh, then also we've gotten rid of the shadow. So if you click on the player himself, uh, which we're going to be actually using this one that we've just added, right? We want to get rid of the shadow. So the shadow is generated via the sphere. So this is the model, but the sphere is his actual body. The model has like the armature, which does the animations and that kind of stuff. We just want to turn cast shadows off. He's like, uh, we're not going to be casting shadows around him. And if we do, they're not going to be that hard. These shadows are way too hard and they're kind of ugly. Uh, we're not going to be casting shadows at all for our game. So then we want to go into the armature as well. And we, if you go into the bone, there's a staff model. It's also casting a shadow. We want to turn that off. No shadows from the character. Okay. So the next thing I did to make the character look better is this character is much larger now than this one. So what we can do is if we click on him, we'll just change the scale to 1.5. And before you do that, we'll just click this little lock button on the left here. This will make it so that when you change one of them, it will change all of the scales at once. So when you do this, you ends up a little bit under the ground so we don't want that make sure you just drag him up a little bit so that he's above the ground and we had to change the code a little bit to make sure that he stays above the ground so on the actual character you have this character controller right if he's 4.1 above the ground your character needs to be walking on the ground now because we put the origin of the character in the middle of the character instead of the feet we have to correct it in the code the real correct thing to do is to actually go into the model itself in blender and change the origin origin to be at his feet so that he is always on the ground no matter how big you make him but because I put the origin in the center of the character we actually need to go in the code so in the movement script where we are making the character move like with controller.move you just need to add this code here so what it does is y is less than 4.1 this will put it on the ground it will set it to the controller transform dot position dot y plus 4.1 so that way no matter when we're moving he's staying 4.1 above the ground. 
So you don't really need to understand this, but if you add this code, it will prevent him from falling through the ground. Yeah, so after that, you can see that we've changed the uh, tip of his stick to be white on the one that I've already finished. So what we want to do is this uh, staff is inside of the character. So stick wizard tutorial inside of the armature, inside of the bone, there's a staff and there's two materials inside of this. So the material that I change it to is actually the very default material. So if you right click at the bottom and you click create material, uh, it didn't do it, but let me just try it again. Uh, yeah, if if you just create a material and you could name it staff material, staff head material or whatever you want to name it, it doesn't matter. You can actually just drag this into the staff exactly the way that it is and you can change the color like that. Now you can make this material whatever you want it to be. So like in this case, I, I'm going to leave it white because I like the way it looks. But if you want, you could turn on like an emission and you could make it glowy if you want to. And that's kind of cool too. Uh, let me just actually compare that to the way that I have it. It makes it look like there's like a light inside of it and it's kind of glowy. You could do that if you want to. We're just going to turn that off for right now. So then the other thing that I did is on my other character, I have a particle system on the staff. So that makes it glow. Like there's like an aura around the staff. So instead of it just being the staff, it has like this particle system as well. So to do this, if we right click on the staff here, we can create an effect particle system so the default particle system it actually is like coming out of the staff like this right and that's kind of cool but we don't want that right we want it to just stay in the same spot and be like glowing around the staff so what we want to do is turn off the shape so on the right here in the particle system turn off the shape and then we don't want this much speed so we just want to set the speed to be a um let's just put it to like 0.1 or something or zero, just turn the speed off altogether. And we want the size to encapsulate the entire end. So change it to two, right? So that's pretty much it to make a glowy uh, particle system around the staff. Now we're gonna change the actual material that we're using. So if you go to the renderer at the bottom, right now it's using particles on lit. You could make this the other part. So just type in the word particle and change it to default particle system. This one's a little bit lighter. And yeah, so that's it for the particle system. The last thing we need to do is change the attack. So inside of the prefabs folder at the bottom, there's two folders, attacks and attack explosions. This one is the attack. I changed the size of it to match the character. So it's 1.5 because a character, we multiplied his size by 1.5. So we can make the attack 1.5 as well. If you turn this lock button on the left, it will lock the three numbers together. So you could just change them all at the same time. The attack explosion, we just change it to 0.45. It was 0.3 before. So that's also a similar increase. Yeah. So if you follow this video correctly, now your character should look exactly like like mine did in the intro. So I think personally, this looks way, way better than it did. Okay, and the very last thing I wanna show you guys is I actually changed the frame rate to, to make this better. So if you click stats in the top right corner while it's running, you can see that I'm getting 300 frames per second on my computer. Now you might not get that on yours and maybe if you're using like a really bad computer, this won't matter. But for me, it really did matter, right? So if we go to the edit uh, menu on the left here and we click project settings, there is a spot for the time and we just wanna change the fixed time step to 0 0.01. This affects how often it redraws and it changes how smooth it looks, I guess. And then in the timeline, we wanna change this to 240. It defaults to 60, so change the drop down to custom and change it to 240. Uh, my monitor only refreshes 240 times per second, so you can do that. And then in the code as well, the application target frame rate we can set that in the start method in the initialize player. And uh, these things make the game look a lot smoother. I also actually changed the speed of the attack in the animator. I felt like the attack was very, very slow. So if you go into the anim like the player animator, so if you don't have it open, there's an animations folder at the uh, player at the bottom where the model is. Just double click this thing that says player controller. It should open up like this. Inside of this, if you click plus at the top here, you can create a float and call it attack speed. And then on the right here for each of the attacks, we want to turn on the multiplier with this check mark and put it on attack speed so that it's going to attack 1.5 times faster than the default. This makes the attack faster and it, it felt very, very slow before I did this. So like the attack right now, even at 1.5 is kind of slow, but you need to be able to upgrade it by finding items on the ground and stuff like that. So I think that this makes a very, very big difference. We need to also turn off the shadow for the attack. So if you go to the attack, you can turn shadows off on this. So that way 
we don't have shadows on the actual uh, thing itself. We're probably going to make the ground unlit at some point, so it's not going to matter. Like, you're not going to actually have to change the shadows manually. And we might also change shadows off for the entire project because it's kind of like a cartoony game, so we don't need that. But uh, yeah, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. The next video, we're going to be doing, doing exploration. So we're going to be able to walk between the rooms and actually these other rooms should not be visible, right? So we're going to be doing that in the next video, but I just felt like it might be important to upgrade the visuals before we actually uh, continue. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.